In this video, I'm going to talk about what's the difference between private banking and wealth management and why you need both. So in this video, I'm going to talk uh, kind of about three things specifically. The difference between private banking and wealth management, more specifically, your relationship with your local private banker. And just really, for those of you beginning, your banker. And then the big one, the big one at the end, how do you become a bank? Can't wait to teach you that. Let's start with the definition of private banking and wealth management. So a lot of you that are out there and you would think, well, this isn't for me because I'm not even close. Well, stay here right now because it could be you. And I want to motivate you to make it you. So private banking is a section within most banks for high net worth individuals. That's simple. You say, well, what's high net worth? Well, I can tell you, you're going to have to be a millionaire to walk through the doors, but that's not going to take very long, right? I'm the millionaire maker. I have a three to five year plan. I have people right now though, in the COVID period now with the volatility of the market, becoming millionaires in a year, 18 months. This is not difficult, but private banking is when you start banking on the other side of the bank. Now, wealth management are typically wealth management firms. There's a lot of firms in the country, some really good ones, some really crappy ones, and they will help manage your money and your wealth as you accumulate it. Typically, um, they'll have a standard, a lot of like beginning firms, they'll take you at a quarter million, half million, and then they'll grow you as you grow your wealth into, you know, one, two, five, you know, 10 million and plus. So there is a difference and they do coexist. You're going to have both. Now let's just talk about banking before we go on. So banking has a 10 X rule, right? So what happens when you put a deposit in the bank, right? And for those of you that are beginners and staying tuned, thank you. Uh, my first goal for you is to help you make a hundred thousand dollars. I love the first hundred. It's the most difficult because we're employee trained and not entrepreneurial trained. So you can't take employee skills that you might've learned in college and become an amazing entrepreneur. You're going to need to get mentoring and help with someone like me to show you how do you make that first hundred quick. And believe me, I promise I actually have a guarantee. I'll do it in less than a year. So we can kind of get over that learning curve of becoming a great entrepreneur. The next goal is that you become accredited. That's a 200,000 per year goal. And for two years in a row, if you make 200,000 or more, or as a couple 350 or more, you're now considered accredited. And with the accredited status, now you have access to invest in all sorts of alternatives that you normally couldn't invest in. PPMs, prospectuses, private businesses, a lot of real estate deals, phenomenal. So our first goal is 100, our next goal is accredited, our next goal is a millionaire. And then once you hit a million, you're off to the races. Now back to banking. Picking that first bank of where you're gonna do this growth is important. They do need to have a, encourage you, I'll say it that way, I would encourage you to have them have a private section of the bank so you move there sooner than later. So here's how banks work. If you put 100,000 in the banks, right, deposits per year, you give them a ten, what's called the 10X rule. They get to reach up to the central banks and get a million. So they get 10 times your deposits. So now let's go the other side, why private banking works and is so important and why your relationship personally is so important. You put a million in, you now gave that bank the opportunity to get 10 million. You say, well, what do they do with it? They give you loans, they give individuals loans, they give companies loans. So they make money on what's called the spread. Like you're not getting paid for your deposits, right? I mean, there's people who actually, you know, motivate you and give you a coffee pot or some little trinket because you're going to move from one bank to the other because they're motivating you to put in deposits. With their collective deposits in a bank, they get 10x. That is their loan ability, right? So then they can put out loans. So knowing that way back in the day, I'll tell you a quick little story how I got a laundromat on my terms. So I went into the bank and knowing this, I actually put a spreadsheet together of the years and years that I've been doing deposits and I was on the private side. So I knew my guy really well and I walked in with this little spreadsheet of all the money that I put into his bank on deposits, millions of dollars. I said, so I know that I have put millions in and you got this. You got 10 times that amount to then borrow out to customers at 7%, 10%. I mean, people with bad credit, 12%. You made all that money. Well, I gave you the benefit of that. So knowing that I'd like a free loan. Ha ha ha. We had a fun little laugh. You said, aren't you cute? I said, well, I am. But I know you have to go to committee, which banks go to committee once a week or one, at least once a week, if not more than that. But they'll go to committee and they'll talk about the different folks applying for loans. So of course, they brought me up and they brought my little presentation that I gave them and they came back and I got a 2% loan. Now I got $200,000 for 2%. Now I had 200,000 in the bank already. 
invested in other things. So obviously the first obvious answer is why don't you use your own money? Uh, because that's invested at more than 2%. So if I inv that invested say at 12%, why do I want to take out that to use my own money when I can use yours? You've used mine for the whole time. So I have a lot to teach you. If you're liking this content, I need you to subscribe right now and then give me lots of thumbs up because I'm going to be here every day giving you new content, new financial literacy about money. And it's important because when you get to that point where you need a banking conversation, I want you to ring me up and say, Laurel, coach me, give me a script on how you, you know, help me get my 2% loan. And so I'll help you put that presentation together and do the conversation. And so I bought a new laundromat for 200 grand and got it for 2%, which is like free money. So when you really understand the system, it's to your advantage, right? Because right now, a lot of people didn't even know that basic rule of private banking, of just banking in general, and then private banking, how you can use it. So let's speak of that, like that was a little bit of my second term before I go into wealth management. You really do need a relationship. The challenge in today's day and era with all this digital uh, access going on, you can pretty much do a lot of your transactions digitally and you, there's no face behind the bank. I cannot encourage you enough to walk through those doors and get to know the human who's actually the brain, the decision maker behind your requests. So uh, really important that you get to know, ideally, if you're at small enough banks, you get to know the bank president or the lending officers, but get to know them. And you know what? Even if you don't qualify for private banking, I'll give you a little homework. Walk through the doors and introduce yourself. Say, I'll see you soon and then make it happen. Right? That's my favorite activity. Part of it is because it puts you on the line for a commitment that I want you to keep and I know I can help you with. Now let's go to the other side, wealth management. Wealth management is the, is the collective. Now you can give your money to a wealth management firm. There's a lot of good ones. And then, like I said, there's bad ones. But I'm gonna teach you is to do some of your own wealth management, to understand your money rules, to understand the integration of wealth. Right, so the reason I exist and built the company the way that I did, because I'm not a financial planner, right? I'm not licensed. I really curated a whole team of experts from alternative financial planners to tax strategists. Uh, people are just simple CPAs. I got bookkeepers, real estate experts, um, M&A experts, insurance, trusts, corporate structure, you name it, right? So a huge team of experts that when you come in, you get access to them. The benefit is we all talk to each other. How many people on your wealth team talk to each other, including your wealth management team? Right, because your wealth management team might have insurance, it might have might have a trust. Typically it doesn't. It's really just management of your family office in this assets. But those people have to talk to the people that have insurance, your entities, your trust, your tax advisor. All these people have to have one conversation, not five or six, and then there you are in the middle trying to manage it all. So my goal is to be your educator, to be your advocate, to stand in the middle of all those people and help put together a proper wealth management plan with your goals, your family's goals, and your family's legacy. And then you'll be using private banking as part of that strategy. So the last and most fun is how to be your own bank. So when you acquire enough money, you can be a bank in several ways, right? You can be a hard money lender or you can borrow your money to different real estate folks. Or I know people who do it just in private aviation where they're helping people buy planes, whatever, buy businesses. So you can be your own bank by being a lender. Right. And again, you would want to use the private banking and its structure because that's what's going to hold your money. You can actually work escrow accounts for you to help manage and control all that. Another way to be your own bank is through life insurance. There's very specific policies. In fact, there's seven that we, uh, that our insurance expert uses, and that'll come on a future video, how to be your own bank and how to put money into the insurance, but then you get the capacity to borrow it back out. So essentially it's your money being leveraged back out to go buy real estate. You can buy businesses. You can invest in your own business, but essentially you're your own bank and your own cycle of cash. It's phenomenal. So there's lots of ways to be your own bank. Those are my two favorite. My favorite is accumulating enough money and being the lender. And you could create your own fund. You could create your own private equity firm. That's for later conversation. But I just want to invite you to think about even on a small scale, Say that you accumulate 100, 200,000. Be very cautious and aware of those loans, especially to your family and friends. Sometimes those don't get paid back. I'm not a fan of those at all, but I am a fan of working with the private banker, working with other people who have been a bank. And how do you do convertible debt lending? And how do you become the bank to help other people fund their dream? You get first position, you'll get the asset back if it doesn't work much stronger position than being an equity partner. Lots to teach you, lots more. Again, if you haven't subscribed yet, do that again now. And I will see you every day 
right here on this channel. Before we leave though, if this is interesting to you, even if you're a beginner and say, oh, it doesn't apply to me yet, make it apply to you. Be that person who's gonna set a big goal and say, I'm gonna have this one day in my life. So fill out an application. There's a link in our show notes below in the description. Fill out the application thoroughly. Like the more I know about you, the more we can help you. And just say, hey, I want a meeting. I want a time one-on-one -on -one with some of Laurel senior team. I wanna talk about this financial infrastructure, private banking, wealth management, cause I'm gonna be there too. So fill out the application, send it in to us, and I'll talk to you on the other side.